and we'll go ahead and kick it over to Tom. Thanks, Kelly. And um, I wanted to, uh, I'm Tom Funstein, for those of you who um, do not know me or have not met before, but I am the Director of Curriculum and Instruction for the IFTI. And um, I'm happy to, uh, that, that the um, curriculum department is kicking off this, uh, revitalizing the training again, for those of you who have never used it, um, to those maybe that are more experienced. Um, this is, I think, one or of the two, maybe two webinars. And I know we have some planned trainings in Hanover or, or talking about it. And then also, oops, also some uh, um, on-site uh, training. If that's something that the directors of training want, um, we're more than happy to come out and travel. Um, the LMS, um, I think it, we started it back in 2012. Um, and, and I think it's uh, it's been through some uh, some obviously some reiterations and some updates and uh, was asked to do a lot of things, I think, uh, in the past. And I think right now it's it's really doing what it was intended to do is to um, to house curriculum and to track and to track and document learning. Um, so um, and I know the new features that that um, will be discussed. Um, have um, we're getting a lot of positive feedback from that, and we appreciate the feedback we receive from from the district councils on, on, on obviously the updates. So um, again, I want to um, you know again welcome you, and again please ask any questions and and don't hesitate to to reach out to to the IFTI staff here um, with any questions or concerns. Um, um, and again, the more you use it, the more we we can help and, and improve it. So um, I think that's it. I'll I'll hand it back to. Um, I'll hand it back to Kelly and then go down with the agenda. Thank you, Tom. You're you're welcome. Okay, first up, Donna, will you uh, go ahead and assist us with the LMS agenda? Okay, so for today's webinar, we'll be talking about the basic features of the LMS. We have another webinar scheduled on March 19th, and that would talk about the administrative features of uh, the LMS. And we're also planning on having uh, in-person or hands-on training at uh, the IFTI. Uh, if you're interested, we'll be sending out some dates after we finish the second webinar. So the requirements are you finish the two webinars. And if your district council is interested in sending you to, the, uh, to IFTI or Hanover, or we could also do it at your district council or uh, one of the ISCs. So um, we'll kick it off or start it with um, the basic website, uh, how to get to the LMS and Kelly can start sharing her screen and show you the website and how to find it. Thank you, Donna. The website for the IFTI LMS is simply IFTILMS.org. That will bring you to the home screen here. And this houses everything you need for the LMS, information about upcoming classes, uh, ways to search, information about um, the instructor training program, those sort of things. Uh, we highly encourage you to go ahead and bookmark this website for your future access. So you don't have to remember the exact website and you can just log on, open the web browser and get right to get to the um, website. One way to do that is to hit the star here on the browser bar. That star will save it to your bookmarks. You can also hit Control D on your keypad, on your keyboard, and that will save it as well. It will bring up all of your bookmarks. And I apologize, that was not supposed to open. <laughs> The third way is to click on the ellipsis, these three dots here on the top right corner, and you will have a list here, a menu of different options and different things you're able to do, but simply for bookmarks, you would click on bookmarks, and then you have the option to save this tab, which is this particular website. We also have, if you scroll down just a little bit here, we have uh, home information. So this talks about the website and we want to play just a small short video here for you that has a little, inform a little more information about the LMS. The 
The International Finishing Trades Institute knows that knowledge is power, and our union is dedicated to giving IUPAT members access to it through high-quality training. So when training means expensive travel, expensive hotels, away from primary job responsibilities, instructor planning, preparation, and classroom setup, those learning opportunities can become a burden. We created the IFTI Learning Management System, or the LMS, so IUPAT members can have the best online training available. Training that can happen anytime, anywhere. The IMTI LMS is an accessible way of providing apprenticeship, leadership, and professional development training course materials to the users. We offer core classes, trade-related curricula, and courses from the K Learning Group covering topics from OSHA safety to Microsoft and even personal life skills. These training programs prepare our members to take advantage of career advancement opportunities to stay engaged and ahead of the game. The International Finishing Trades Institute offers IUPAT members customized training in a secure web-based software program. The LMS is also used for the administration, documentation, tracking, and reporting of training programs, classroom and online events, learning programs, and training content. Now you can hit the ground running while barely even lifting the finger. Go to IFTILMS.org and check the homepage updates, then log in. If you do not have any username and password or course enrollments, contact your director of training. Getting great training into our members' hands is now easier than ever. So go ahead. Be powerful with the IFTI LMS. Okay, that's just a short video to show you a little bit about the LMS, give you an introduction. And again, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact your director of training directly, or you can always con contact the IT excuse me, the IFTI to assist you further. And now we will throw it over to Alice for the um, menu and toolbar. Okay, hi everybody. Um, I'm Alice Gwynn of the FTI, if you don't know me. Um, I'm gonna take just a couple of minutes to go over the main toolbar of the LMS that you see here at the top of your screen. It begins with home. Um, and just a reminder that the home page is a public page. Um, it's a dynamic page that is constantly updated uh, regularly, and it can be found and viewed by anyone who has the link um, for the FTI LMS, or if it's, it's searchable. So anybody who's on the web and comes across it um, will be able to view this page. So there's nothing proprietary on this page. It's all, it's all for public viewing, um, but a lot of good information. Um, and just a reminder that the LMS is mobile friendly and can be used on a PC, a Mac, a tablet, a phone, um, basically any way you uh, are using your electronics. And, um, and finally, any of the content on this page is, is searchable and clickable. So the first link is, uh, the first tab is uh, on the toolbar is the home page, which you're already viewing. Um, so this page will be viewable if you log into the LMS or if you access the LMS homepage, um, and then it'll be available to you in the form of the, um, of the Finishing Trades Institute logo. You can be able to look, go back to the homepage if you're logged into the LMS, and we'll show you that a little bit later. Um, the next tab on the dashboard, on the uh, toolbar is the, my dashboard. And so my dashboard is your private page in the LMS. Um, if you, if you're not logged into the LMS, then it'll bring you to a login page. And from here is when you would log in. But if you're not logged in, um, or if you are logged in, it'll take you directly. If you're not logged in, you'll have to log in to actually go to your private dashboard. Okay, the next one is the news. Um, and the news is, you know, everything about the LMS or the FTI, the LMS, our classes, new courses, tips, tricks. Um, and you must be logged in. Well, I guess you don't have to be logged in, but um, if that's available here. The main thing on this page is the FTI newsletter archive. So on a monthly basis, our team writes a newsletter um, talking about anything that's new classes, um, any new training that's available, maybe updates on the COE program or the instructor program. Anything that we find is pertinent or any activities that we, we may have participated in that we want to share with you. So from here, you'll be able to, um, well, first of all, 
if you're already an instructor, most likely you should be receiving this um, email, this email um, newsletter. If you're not, you can click the link to join the mailing list. Um, and that way we'll add that to, um, to our monthly subscription. So then if you actually open, open, open one, you can click and read what, uh, you know, what that newsletter was for that particular month. Um, and then you'll see also the top left hand side, there's also a subscribe button there. So if you need to subscribe to it, you have two opportunities to do so. Okay, let me go back to the homepage. All right. Uh, anything on the on the news page is searchable. Kelly's going to go over a little bit more about using the search box um, a little bit later. But you, you see on the right hand side, it, it remains static when you're on the home page. Okay, the help. So the help tab you know, could be your best friend. Um, when you're exploring the LMS, you might come across some things that you have questions about or might not know how to do or run into a, a little bit of a roadblock. So the help page um, was designed based on frequently asked questions and we put it into a usable format um, for you to be able to search and use. So um, so the first thing on this is, is the LMS, you know, the LMS contact form. Um, you'll see this in a number of places throughout the LMS. We want you to be able to reach us if you have a problem. And that contact form um, asks for your information so we know who to contact um, and a very specific reason for you call, you contacting us. So maybe a screenshot or if you're having trouble with a course, tell us specifically what the problem is and it goes to an email and then we, we will respond to you uh, pretty quickly, 24 to 48 hours at the most. Um, again, there's a link to the newsletter archive. The newsletter archive could be a great resource for help topics. Um, we cover those sometimes in those newsletters, so you can click and search those newsletters um, for a particular topic. And then um, finally, we have three different, um, three different, they're divided, the help desk is provided into three different categories. Um, so we've got the for admins only, um, we have users, and then there's a little part on the member mobile app. So you can search um, each of those topics. If you're an admin, you have different permissions, so your request for help might be a little bit different. Um, so here you can search, um, you can use, again, Kelly would talk about the search box, but if you use a control F, you can search for, let's say you're searching for OSHA, you have a question about OSHA, and then it'll take you directly to um, that help uh, piece. So it'll tell you how to log in. Um, maybe you didn't realize that a 70% is required to pass, or maybe you didn't realize you only had six months to take your OSHA course and it won't log let you in anymore. So always check the help before you call us or um, send a request. Um, oftentimes, there's also a video or screenshots that are, are attached to these help messages to help guide you um, through those processes. So then if we scroll down a little bit more to the bottom of this page, again, there will be a um, contact form. So you see here, these are some of the screenshots that we share. There's videos in some cases. It's all the way at the end. Mm -hmm. so, so at the very end, there will be another opportunity for you to send a message using the LMS, uh, the contact form there. Um, there's also just because we asked ask for screenshots. So you could search for um, screenshot, I think is what it's called. And it'll take you to, you know, how to, how to do a screenshot. So there's a link there. It'll take you to... Um, a, a website that tells you how to take a screenshot from any device that you happen to be using. So that's one way you can use the help is searching. Okay, so the next we'll go back to the main toolbar again. So we've gone through home, my dashboard, news, help, and then the next link is the, is the IFTI webpage. 
So that's just a direct link to the web page. And here you can find all about the trades. Um, there'll be some news and information that's usually kind of IU related. Um, and then you, there's a, there are videos and things you can scroll through. And then there's always a link back to the LMS on that top, uh, that top toolbar. So you can easily get from iftilms.org and between the ifti.edu website. Okay, so the next is the admin tools. And the admin tools is kind of an add-on to the LMS. Um, it's, it's a way to perform kind of a more specific and efficient user search. Um, there's more search criteria that you can use and the main purpose usually is to upload third-party certifications. So these are third-party certifications um, that will be found on your mobile map once they're uploaded. They're different from the certificates of completion in the LMS. These are actual certifications. So we use the admin tools um, to upload those, and it does require specific permissions. So if you don't have that permission, you need that permission, or you're a DOT and you want someone to have that permission, then just send us an email um, at support at iupat.org. Or, <laughs> or use the contact form. Yeah, use the contact us form as well, because it, it all goes to the same place. Anything and else and we'll talk more about this on the next webinar. So this is one of the um, features of the admin um, menu. So mm -hmm. aside from the admin menu, we have the admin tool. So, um, we'll have step-by-step -step instructions on the next webinar. Yep. Yes, uh, we heard. Is there a question? question? Yeah. Nope. Okay, so, and the final link on the toolbar is the login link, and you'll see throughout the LMS homepage, there are multiple ways to log in. Um, so the most prominent one is right here on the toolbar. You can log in there. You see on the right-hand side, there's a toolbar or a login bar, um, and then just the login requires your username, which is your member ID, and a password. And everybody defaults to FTI123. We do ask you to change that. Once you get in there, it'll, you, you'll be able to change your password to something that's more secure. And that's the, that's the, uh, that's the main toolbar. Does anybody have any questions about it? We do, have, we do have two questions in the chat. Um, okay. I'll go with the second one that was asked because I think this is a little more simple to ask um, and to answer. Does the LMS work with any browser? Yeah. Yes, it does. The second question, um, and I think this may be a question that many people just have. Woke up. Is, um, you just woke up, I think. Okay, we need to... Mute. If you have your um, mic on, please mute it. Thank you. Uh, the next question uh, was asked. It is. Pre it was previously my understanding that the LMS was going to fade out once the Unite program was launched. Is this not the case anymore? No. So um, right now, uh, Unite continues to be the main uh, database for membership information. We have programs, some of um, like the transcript, the official transcript is there. There's also a way to upload certifications in there and the ILT module was created in Unite. But uh, the LMS will continue to be the online um, platform where all the training resources will be uh, saved. So Unite cannot launch uh, courses for now, but in any case that that changes, we will be the first one to inform you. Mm -hmm. So we've, uh, we're always looking for uh, the best LMS uh, available and the best ways to uh, launch our um, courses. So in any case that we have any changes to the platforms or to the systems, we will be updating you. Thank you. I think we're moving on to the next section, Lisa. Okay. All right, so if we look on that main page there, Alice went over that top bar right below it. If you see the word alerts and the little flashing uh, circle, um, I'm gonna go over that. And then I'm also gonna go over the big blue slider uh, below that. So we'll start with the alerts. 
Um, the alerts basically is, contain scrolling announcements, as you can see, and these are announcements. Um, they could have uh, important announcements about schedule changes, or it could be recent articles for users or administrators. And if you just look at the topics that are listed there, um, if you you can, they're clickable, so you can click on any of those topics and get to um, information. So, for example. Um, Donna, would you click on the IFTI Instructional Service Centers? Okay. Click on that one just a little bit. Okay, so for, you know, we are um, COE accredited our instructor training programs. And I'll be talking about that in a minute. Um, but we also have several instructional service centers that are also accredited along with us. That allows us to be able to um, provide our training at these locations as well. So we have a list here, if you were interested in finding out where these locations are, you can see here on this page. Um, and it also has a link to the instructor training programs as well from here. Uh, but those are our four instructional service centers and we're happy to have them and hope to utilize them more in the future for, for our trainings. Anybody wanna add anything? Okay, <laughs> all right. So if we go back to that main page, all right. Um, so I'm not going to go over anything else. I'm not going to take, you can take some time. I highly recommend go and um, scroll through that. Um, say a, another popular title would be the OSHA 10 and OSHA 30 enrollments. Being able to do that right from that bar um, is going to be convenient if you need to self-enroll in those courses or enroll your, um, your uh, instructor in those courses. Okay. And whoops. Thank you. Okay. Oh, let's see, what else am I gonna talk about? Okay, so that's just the alert section. We're gonna go down below to the big blue slider. Um, we have five sections um, that are listed on this blue slider. We have our, um, I'm just gonna go through them and then we'll click on one, all right? Okay. So login LMS training, uh, IFTI instructor programs, COE accreditation, and then the degree program. So I thought um, we'd start with the um, obviously login. You would be able to log in as Alice had mentioned before and Kelly, there are several different ways that you can log in. That's also one of them. So you would click on that and it would be, uh, you would be able to log into um, your dashboard at that time. Uh, LMS training, if you look back there is uh, on that little yeah, tab, click on that. And any of the LF LMS, previous LMS trainings that we have completed here um, are going to be listed here. I believe there are some from 2020. If you scroll all the way down, I think, is it still there? We had the one. Yeah, there were uh, webinars from 2020 was were actually uh, recorded and listed there. So, and then when this is finished, we will have this training uploaded and um, you'll be able to find it housed here on this page. Okay. All right, then we go to the instructor training program and here we have um, the pathway, our instructor pathway that we encourage, of course, many of you are already familiar with it. We have our associate instructor program, our master instructor program, our, and then of course we encourage you to continue your education after the master instructor beyond that into an associate degree or bachelor degree. And we have listed some of the schools that we have articulation agreements worked out with at the, at the present time. Um, so any information that you need, if you scroll down a little bit. Yeah, any information about the instructor program is gonna be listed here with several links you can link to the course catalog, you can go to the instructor pathway, which would just be a PDF of that instructor pathway flyer. Okay. Go back. Yep. Go back. Sorry. Okay. And then the last one, or no, COE accreditation. So the second to last one. <laughs> okay. Um, as you know, we had, many of you know, I don't know if everybody know, I think you probably do. Um, we certainly made a lot of announcements about it. Uh, we are COE accredited and we had our reaffirmation of accreditation this past fall. And we 
had a very successful reaffirmation and we expect to um, be receiving official word uh, this month, meetings taking place that of our reaffirmation and hopefully it's for six years, another six years. And so this page will have a um, link to the COE website. You can click on that and you can read all about our accreditation as well as link to our self-study. Lisa? Yes. Will you just give a real short um, overview of what the COE is, what it stands for and what it means for our institution? Um, it is the Council on Occupational Education and it is a accrediting agency that's been around for many, many years. A lot of technical schools and colleges um, go through accreditation because once you're accredited, um, it also helps to, helps to be recognized by um, federal agencies. So you're uh, able to apply for grants that can help um, you know, get your name out there, but also uh, develop curriculum and it's, it, it validates, it validates your program, gives structure to it, goes through 10 standards. Um, it's very rigorous. You have to write a self-study and you have to prove that you meet all 10 of these standards. And so it is pretty, um, it's, it's a great thing to have for your institution. And we have several district councils that are accredited on their own for their apprenticeships as well as us for our instructor training programs and our instructional service centers. And oh, and if you look down here, we do have links um, that we have uh, for different plans that we've written because all of our, um, we have to have certain plans that we keep um, in check and re-evaluate every year to make sure that we're on track with our COE certification. We also have a link um, to our student handbook and we recently redid this for our affirmation. Donna's gonna click on that. So if you want a chance to peruse that, because like I said, it's recently updated, on um, the table of contents, I think that's the second page. Of mine. Um, we have uh, our mission statement, purpose statement. We have information about our instructor training programs. As you can see, I'm not gonna read through the whole list. Um, anything having to do with academic and educational policies, student safety, curriculum. Our staff is listed there as well as the board of trustees. Thank you, Lisa. Uh-huh, sure. Okay, let me just go back to the main page. All right, and our last um, section is the degree program. And we're not getting Okay, when you have a moment, we're not gonna do that today just for time um, constraint purposes. But there is a um, IFTI degree program animation, and it just is a nice little animation like what we had in the beginning about the LMS. So when you have a moment, um, if you want to review that, I think you'll enjoy what it what it uh, the information that it brings. But all the information about that program also is listed here. So the degree program we have uh, agreements worked out with several schools. Um, we have Empire State College. Rowan University, Columbia Southern, and we also are currently working out one with um, Pittsburgh State um, University of Kansas. And that is one that we're working with Dr. Johnson, who teaches the instructor training programs here. And we will um, hopefully be having information about that coming soon. I'm actually working on that agreement right now. So hopefully sometime within the next few months, we'll have more information that I'll be able to add that to the LMS as well. Okay. And I believe that is my final um, section. Well, at least for now, yeah, yeah uh, the degree program. So I was just going over the blue slider and I'm gonna turn it over to Donna because she is going to talk about the blue icons to the right of the blue slider. Before Donna starts, does anybody have any questions? Oh, good idea. <laughs> Is that also talked about? Yeah. So when I uh, before when I showed you the um, the admin tools on the on the user main. Oh, um, maybe say the question. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, okay. There's a question. I don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> Does the right. So there's a question in the chat. 
Does the LMS still talk to the IUPAT app to see completed training? Is the IUPAT app fully functional with Android devices now? Um, so before I pointed out to you on the main user uh, toolbar was the admin tools. I, I said it was a third party add-on and that is where cert certifications are typically uploaded. And yes, those are, are directly shared and displayed on the members app. Yes, yeah, so the three systems talk to each other every night. So we have the LMS, uh, the, all the training completions are in the LMS, plus uh, they are transferred to Unite uh, every, every day. Then it's also talking to the app. Uh, so all those three systems talk to each other. Regarding the question up, about the Android, we're, we want to say yes, because there was an update to the app. But uh, Dave, I'll talk to Kurt uh, to verify this question. And um, once we receive that confirmation, we'll email, we'll send it as part of that video and that answer to this question about the Android. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, uh, talk, um, Lisa talked about the slider. On the right side of the slider, we, you have four main blue tiles. You have the calendar, you have uh, the contact us again link in videos and the course catalog. So these are the top um, features that coordinators or instructors and DOTs use whenever they, they log into the LMS. So the first one is the calendar. If you click on the calendar, that's all the classes held in Hanover. Um, we have two formats for the calendar. We have the Google Sheet. Um, some of the DOTs prefer just looking at one sheet and printing it. Um, but if you prefer looking at by uh, through the calendar format, you can also do that. And from the calendar fo format, you can do searches uh, regarding like your preferred course or something that um, a training that you're you want to register. Um, we also have three different forms on this page. You have the DOT registration form, um, the instructor coordinator registration form. So if I open the DOT registration form, I would ask for the basic information for the instructor or coordinator and the preferred training. And if you looked at the calendar, you can type in the course code and course name. Aside from that, we also have um, this link for the course syllabus. Um, so this is new. Uh, it, it's, it's one of the requirements of the COE. So it lists all the courses or active courses that we offer here in Hanover. We have about 80 plus courses. And the good thing about this, if you're not familiar with the course or you haven't taken the course and you just know, want to know what it is, you can click on it and it would give you um, basic descriptions, short description, the objectives, and it would even have the instructor information. So we have this available for most of our classes if we have an assigned instructor. So you can just um, check which class you want to know and you can click on it and um, get that information. Then the last link here would be the course request. And some of you may have used uh, this form. Um, if you're looking at the calendar and you see that um, the training is not listed, you want to register in the training, but it's not listed, or you're an admin and you want to upload a completion, but it's not part of the programs of study, then you can click on this course request and it, it would just ask uh, basic information about the course you're looking for. Then um, identify if it's a certification or not, then, um, if you have resources um, for this course, you can also send it to our mailbox. Then it goes to our mailbox and we look at the program programs of study, if it's available or not. If, it, if it's not, then we create um, the new course code. And if it's specific to your district council, it, it would have a unique course code for your district council. So aside from the calendar, uh, we also have um, a way to communicate to the IFTI or support. And um, Alice mentioned about this when she was um, viewing the help area. So uh, it would ask basic information about, about you. Um, and we have some drop down uh, topics here and you can just select from there. Or if you have uh, 
a specific topic and you just type in your question. Then um, as Alice mentioned, um, if you can get a screenshot, if, especially if it's a technical question, take a screenshot and we have links here on how to take a screenshot and attach it to the form and click submit. So once you click submit, it goes to the help desk and depending on the keywords that you use, it would be um, routed to the right um, support desk. So if it's about LMS, it goes to the curriculum team. If it's about Unite, it goes to Nathan and Kurt's team. So we highly advise that you use this form because it has all the information because sometimes we would just get random questions like, forgot my password and there was no member ID and it was a very generic name. So um, to prevent those um, multiple emails, we require that you have all the information available so we can address or even test if it's a technical issue. And, and using this contact form also um, helps us to create those frequently asked questions. That way, if we get multiple questions about a similar topic, we can create a, um, a help topic so that you know, we can prevent you having to go too far and wait for a response from us. And, and Donna, just to add to that, the more information we have, the better we are able to assist you. So if, if you give us detailed information in that first communication, we may be able to resolve that, that issue before we even reply to you. That way you're not waiting on communication back and forth. Okay, thanks, Kyle. Okay, aside from the um, calendar and support link, we also have videos. So before videos are embedded within courses and it was hard to find them. So now we have a public page for the frequently requested videos. Uh, during the pandemic, it was all about the respirator videos. So we have them on top. Then we also have um, the trade videos. So these are used for recruitment and for, for uh, new apprentices. And th there's all, also a way to download this um, these videos, and yes, there's through the hub. Yeah, through the IUPAT hub. And, and these, again, these are on a public page, so you can use them in your recruiting. So if you're going to a trade show or you're having a group of students come in, um, you can either go to this page and show it, or you can go directly to um, the YouTube page and show it while you have your, your audience there. Yeah, and there, um, these videos are less than 10 minutes, so they're great videos, especially if they don't have any knowledge about the trade. So these are great recruitment videos. Uh, aside from that, um, we have some of the um, core and trade uh, specific videos here. Um, we just added the IFTI tour that we published. And anytime you need a video and or we feel that a video is always requested, we will publish it here. Aside from the videos, again, one of the popular features of the LMS would be the course catalog. So from the course catalog, we have um, different um, documents here. The main document would be the programs of study. So it's a listing of all the available courses in Hanover um, or offered at your district uh, council, um, approved by the DOL. Uh, and it has a listing of the courses, description, the competencies aligned with the, uh, the course. And it's a very large document. It's more than 400 pages. So if you have time and you're a new instructor, this would be a good document to review. And you can just uh, review the trade uh, that you're assigned to. So I'll just go through the introduction and uh, some of the parts that talk about the course goes. So let me just go to, I think it's page six. Okay, there you go. So this page talks about um, the course numbering and Every trade has a specific um, abbreviation and num a number. Let's say if you're looking for drywall courses, they will always start with 3000. So if they, their uh, course code would be dry, D-R-Y, and 3000. If it's sign, it would be S-G-N, 8000. Then aside from that, uh, we have um, unique abbreviations or uh, customized course number. Um, we've started as we built the programs of study and the courses, we noticed that some courses are only for a specific, specific, specific region or a district council. So you may see 
CAN, that would be all the Canadian courses. We started um, translating courses. So you might see an SPN, those are Spanish courses, customizing it for French uh, speaking uh, apprentices or instructors. We have French courses available there. Then if you are attending an FTI class here in Hanover, the course code will always be FTI. And that's how we filter your um, completion so that we would see if you're uh, meeting the requirements of the associate instructor program. Then aside from that, if you're requesting a district council specific course code, it would have C plus uh, the course number. So uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of that. Um, uh, like by looking at the program study, if it doesn't meet the exact description or the course hours, then uh, a lot of district councils customize their course courses. So you, you will be seeing a lot of those. Uh, and this would be a sample of a course code. It would have a, a unique number in the course title. And these are all searchable um, in the LMS. So either you type in the number or a keyword in that course name. Then I saw a question from Phil. Okay, so Phil is asking, do we need to see all the courses? Can we have the option not to see the other district council course? Yes. So right now that your permissions are by district council. So the catalog, um, the catalogs are by district council. So if it's, let's say district council 11 course, the course is assigned to um, district council 11. However, when you, when you um, do the enrollment again, they would still see those, right? If you put it in a private catalog mm -hmm. and only give those groups access to that catalog, then only they would see them. Yeah, that's how it's set up right now. <clears throat> Does that answer your question, Phil? Okay. And the last thing here for acronyms and um, the course codes, um, for certifications and the courses trans, um, sent to the app, um, it would be course codes ending in C. So that's how we, we identified if it's a certification course. Then um, we have certain trade specific courses that started having an instructor uh, code and a student code. And that would be mostly seen with Glazing since they would have their, uh, an instructor code would have their lesson plan the answer key and other resources available for the instructor and the student would just have access to the online training module and some probably handouts. So those are the different um, classifications or the acronyms. And um, again, if you have time, uh, review the programs of study. It's found on, on your LMS. It's found on the homepage um, and go to your specific trade. So, any questions from the other district councils before we log into the system? No? Okay, I'll turn it over to Kelly. Kelly, I think you still have the default page, right? I do, yes. Yep. Okay, on, on the home screen, the default page here, if you scroll down just a little bit past your, your blue um, tiles there, you have login, which we'll discuss in just a little while. And then you have the search bar here. So this is, Alice mentioned earlier, there are different ways to search, but this is a great tool for you to search for anything um, like specific courses, the calendar, um, if you wanted information on the OSHA courses, uh, third-party courses. So Donna, will you type in third-party? And you can type in third party and click enter or click the magnifying. So this will bring up everything that talks about third party courses. So that can be if it's mentioned in newsletters, anything um, that talks about third party courses. But here we pulled up the third party courses best practices. So you'll have all the information that is geared towards the third party courses. Uh, those are the courses with the asterisk, which looks like a little star. And here's the, this gives us a list. Um, you have a link there for the list and the, the prices, uh, the cost for those. And currently, if you see in the blue box there, currently the FTI and LMCI, LMP 
um, has taken the action to assist in facilitating um, and has agreed to take care of the costs for those through June 30th. So that's a benefit to our councils at this time. Donna, if you'll go ahead and go back. All right. So again, you can use that as um, a tool to search for anything on, on the homepage. The next box you'll see right under that is the FTI instructor program, which will give you the information about the instructor program, which Lisa discussed, and she will discuss a little bit more as we move forward. And if you scroll down to the very end of the page, the last thing you'll see is those little circles at the bottom. This is our social media platforms. Uh, we currently have information on Facebook and on X. There's updated information there uh, when, when there's uh, trade shows and meetings and uh, things that district councils are doing. We update, update that with information um, and pictures for you. So please follow us on Facebook. Um, X has some articles as well. That's formerly known as Twitter. And then the YouTube channel. We mentioned that earlier. Uh, we have training videos there. We have um, information about the trades and different videos available. Uh, some of those videos are public and some would be uh, restricted to just the, um, the union and uh, directors and um, Alice, would you speak more on those videos and the restrictions or the availability for those, please? Yeah, sure. Um, so, so we'll, we might have some like for the AGMT. Um, right now, they are unlisted so that only the person, uh, people that have the link can actually view those videos. Um, you know, if, if Matt gives us the okay, then we can make them public. Um, but some things, if they contain proprietary information or practices, um, we tend to keep those, you know, a little bit under wraps so that um, they'll be found in the course, but not available for someone to search for in YouTube itself. Thank you, Alice. With that being said, if there's information that you are looking for, uh, please reach out to us. If there's um, a you know, some some type of training or some some information you're looking for and you're looking for that in a form of a video, please reach out to the curriculum team and we'll be happy to assist you in either getting that information or um, maybe put that on a list of things that we would be looking to develop in the future. Uh, at this time, we'll go ahead and discuss any questions. And we do have one in the chat from Brian. Um, Ken, I think this is probably a question for you. I know you and I have discussed this before. The question is, why does it take a while once you enroll a group of students for a course to show up for them to access? Um, basically, there's an algorithm on the back end that is um, scheduled. So it's not an automatic thing. So it, it's been used for timing purposes. The priority is to launch the content for users and the availability for reports. And the um, secondary is for the enrollment. So it's scheduled on the back end. So depending on when the users are created, how many rules it has to go through before it um, determines if the user can have the enrollment, whether they were already enrolled before, does this one override something in the past? Um, and the timing of the execution of that enrollment um, call, it could take up to an hour or so. So basically it really depends on how long, um, when the last time the, the execution was requested, uh, when it was run and how many groups and, and um, courses everything has to go through before it make, uh, the LMS makes a determination on if it's available to make um, the course available to the user. Thanks, Ken. Brian, does that help answer the question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, we'll go ahead and move into the question and answer portion of, of the training at this point. If you have a question, you can either go ahead and put it in the chat or unmute yourself and we'll, we'll go ahead and answer those questions as they come in.
the top question that we still get up to now is still, I forgot my password. <laughs> so that's an easy fix that we can uh, talk about today. Then Alice uh, will talk about how to fix that or how to reset your password. I, I don't see anything on the chat room and I think they don't have any questions. But again, if you have any questions, just unmute yourself or um, type on the um, chat chat window. Okay, I'll mm -hmm. share. Okay. Uh, here again. Uh, what's ahead. the best Hi, way if a student gets locked out? If a student gets locked out, um, as, as the um, coordinator or the, the instructor or DOT, you can contact us directly. Um, they can they can hit the submit uh, forgot password or they can submit um, um, a request through support at IUPAT.org. And, and I can explain um, getting locked out. So if um, they tried it five times and it's the incorrect password, they get locked out for three, three minutes. So if they suddenly remember their password, they have to wait for three minutes. Uh, if they forgot their password, again, uh, follow Kelly's instructions, reset the passwords, uh, then log in after three minutes. Uh, then there's another question on the chat room. Sure. Uh, Phil is asking, do we know what each DC has saved with the cost of OSHA 10 and 30s being covered by the LMCI? If this is not an appropriate question at this time, I understand. Um, I don't know, Donna, maybe you have the answer to this, but I, I'm not sure if we have that information available. Yeah, we do not have that information per se. We don't have access to the financials. <laughs> they don't can, get, can, they don't can give us that information. <laughs> But I would, uh, you know, if you're curious about your own district council, then maybe you can reach out to Anton. Yeah, and uh, through reports, you can run a report um, and just search who who clicked the course, and that that's how they bill us. Mm -hmm. So OSHA 10 and 30 are billable uh, upon clicking the course. Yes, basically they're they're online courses through third party through Click Safety. Mm -hmm. And they're billed not on enrollment, but on actually launching the course. So if you bite the stake, you buy the stake. So if you launch the course, that's when the, then the course becomes chargeable. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll start sharing my screen and we log into the system. Yep. So we talked about earlier that there are numerous opportunities to find the login screen um, or the login block. So we'll just use the one that's most apparent to us right here on the, um, on the home page. And again, um, um, you'll use your username, your member ID and your password. Hopefully you've already changed your password, but you can do that after you log in. Um, for training purposes, we'll be using a demo account. Um, so from here, um, we would log in, but if you forgot your password, this is what you would click if you can't remember your password. Um, and then that email, you, you have to use the same email that you registered with. So whatever's in the Unite system, whatever's in the LMS, that's the email that you need to use because if you've used another one or it goes to your, your wife or your husband or your grandmother, you're not going to get that email. So make sure you use the email that's tied to you. Um, and then you'll get an email, you can reset your password and then log into the LMS. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and so we're going to leave the public page and we're going to go into the private page. So for this um, webinar, we'll be using a demo account so we can see what our apprentices are, are seeing because most of us would have admin permissions. So this is the actual view for students. And if they don't have, if you don't have uh, member IDs, and now we've opened non-member IDs. Um, so every staff of your local has access to Unite and they can create the accounts and now once it's created in Unite, it's real time in the LMS. We don't need to wait for a day. So once that account is created, and 
I think it, it's th thanks to Phil because he was requesting that in real time. So uh, that's that's now happening. So we're not logged into the system. Then um, Alice will talk about the enrollment stage. Yep. So this is uh, this is your dashboard. So you see from the the top menu bar, we tried when we were on the public page, we weren't logged in. So we it was going to force us to log in. So now that we're logged in, if you were to click my dashboard. Um, it would bring you to uh, your your private dashboard. So this is this is training demo two's dashboard. So it's only accessible to training demo two. So if you were Phil Harper, this would only be seen by Phil Harper. Um, so what you see here on the top of the page, there are certain widgets, and I think someone else is going to talk specifically about those widgets. But I'm, we're going to look directly at the enrollments. The enrollments are always visible on um, on your page, on your dashboard. So upon logging in, you'll see all of the courses that you are currently enrolled in. Um, those courses um, can, so if you look all the way across the top of the, those enrollments, um, there are different ways that you can view those. So the first one is um, to sort and the sort Options are by code, title, date, expiration date, learning path order. We, we recommend, and the most efficient way is either by course code or course title. This just automatically sorts it. You're not putting in a specific number. It's just going to sort, sort, uh, sort it by um, the title or the code. We don't typically use due dates or expiration dates um, on our courses. That's just that there's a lot of administration that requires you know, upkeep of those kinds of things. If you choose to do it, then that, that would be your choice and we can work with you on that. Um, and then not always necessary to sort by learning path order because there's a widget and you can look at your learning path widget, which will also be discussed a little bit later. So the next one is the funnel, um, which is the filter. And again, the most useful ones are enrolled and um, standalone. Because again, you can read, you can see your learning path um, in your widget, and we don't typically use, you know, time constraints on our courses. So the overdue, expired, completed, pended. You can search by completed, um, but the other, the other ones are date oriented, and we don't typically use overdue dates or, or expiration dates. Can I say something? Yep. Um, if somebody does uncheck the enrolled at the top, then all of those courses that they're enrolled in will disappear. So if somebody comes to you and says, I don't see any courses there, click on the filter and then make sure that the enrolled is checked. And then that will bring up all the courses that they're enrolled in. Yeah, and, and we had that question uh, mm -hmm. sent to us. He's looking for his OSHA, can't find his OSHA. It's because uh, I think completed or expired was the one checked, not the so one enrolled. enrolled. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's one way of uh, finding your courses. And Alice mentioned another good setup is just look at the standalone courses. Most of you are assigned to learning paths, and some of you have 300 courses. And sometimes it's very difficult to find the courses. Since there's already a widget for learning paths, uh, just go to the widget and find uh, the courses assigned to you. Uh, usually we assign them by trade, or if you're a DOT, it's in one big uh, learning path. Yeah. Alice, before you continue, um, Jeremy had his hand raised. Jeremy, was your question oh. answered? Kind of. I was, I have a sit where I'm trying to, whenever they give us the LMS for the new students, they've got all these enrollments. Um, but I was wanting to find out if I can make a learning path for the ones that and set dates so I can tell them when they can do it and how they can each one and what the schedule is so I can keep them all in the same page instead of having people all over the place. Correct. Yep. yep. Uh, the old LMS only had enrollments before and that's the top request. Um, we're just sorting by uh, course title and uh, course code. Is there a way to have like a series of um, courses or uh, creating a pathway? Now we have the widget for learning paths. Uh, I can scroll down. And depends on the learning path assigned to you for this uh, training demo. Uh, the, the account is assigned to a district council 46 learning path. And depends on how you set up your learning path. It may have uh, two courses, 20 courses, and it would be 
in the way that you set up your, the courses. Either it's in sequence or you don't care about that. And after completing the series of courses, then it can even um, send an, or save an automatic certificate of completion for the member. And we'll talk more about that, the setup for learning paths on the next webinar. Uh, Donna, um, Jeremy, correct me if I'm wrong. You're specifically speaking of uh, Job Corps. Okay, so yeah, uh, the, yeah, the Job Corps learning paths are set up um, with the, the Job Corps curriculum that's needed based on what is required from the DOL. So Donna, correct right. me if I'm wrong, that would need to be a further discussion if we were to have different learning paths or update those. Well, yeah, I mean, I um, can... yeah, go this... ahead, Jeremy. This learning path I can use, I was just looking at enrollments. So like as I'm going through, I'm doing lead or I'm doing respirator, I can set it up to where I can make my own schedule as I go through and mm -hmm. do a complete cycle. When I get new students, they can come in right where the other ones are at and they can keep learning. And it's just a continuous cycle that I can set my enrollments up mm -hmm. that for the section as much as what I have set up to teach. Okay. Does that make sense? Donna, that to me sounds like a for, like a more in depth conversation to discuss yeah. specifically. Right? Yeah. So for for Job Corps, um, all the learning paths were set up um, based on that uh, the standard. So if you have new learning paths, um, we can include Todd in the discussion. But it's it's possible. Whatever, however you want to configure your learning paths, that's possible. And um, Alice and I managed the the catalog. And once there's a new learning path, we see it, and uh, we just request that you 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 put the name of your district council or your if it's job corps, you put the name district. Um, I mean job corps in there, so we can assign it to your district council or job job corps, so that not everybody's seeing. It. Uh, Philip Scott has his hand up. Okay. Yeah, this is um more for to try to answer Jeremy's um, with the, the job core. Um, it doesn't have any, uh, it's been a while since I've been into that and laid it out, but there's no leading course. So if you're going to lead or if you're going to sandblasting, you can tell your students to look at those ahead of time. They don't have to do that. Their courses in any, any specific order. Yep, and the learning path has the option, either you arrange the series of courses or there's no order. So it, it's up to the person who wants to set up the learning path. Yeah, and the job core learning path, um, the courses are there, but there's no order to them. They, the students can just click on the course and do it. Yeah, that's what I was running into with some of them would sit there and get on a computer and just do a whole bunch of stuff. And then they come to me and say, well, why can't I check all this off of my TAR? I say, I can't give you all this stuff at one time because your TAR is going to go to 40%. And I have not been able to teach you. Does that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So just to clarify, do you want the learning path to be in order or no order? Jeremy, you're still on mute. I'd like to have a way that we as instructors can order or make a, I guess, a learning path, like a, not the main one for the district council, but as a personal instructor can set up his own learning path as well. So he can set it up to where he can put his uh, order of what he's wanting to do everything to teach a class. And in a sequence, so and that way everybody's on the same has the same learning path uh, stuff that they got to do. Yep, yep. And uh, what we what we're seeing in uh, Job Corps, um, we have that main learning path for Job Corps, and it, it has a certificate. But by training center, some of some of the instructors have uh, other courses that they've assigned mm -hmm. to groups or to a learning path. So again, maybe uh, when we go to the uh, 
um, LMS admin training, that could be a sample. We can look yeah. at the main learning path because the, the problem that goes with multiple learning paths, there are several duplicates. Like that's already found in uh, the, the original learning path and it's added. So sometimes you would see three or four uh, courses of the same name. So um, yes. I, I'm writing it down and that would be our sample. <laughs> we'll look at a uh, job for learning path and we'll create a new learning path. All right, thank you. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, so we'll continue on um, on the dashboard page um, with regard to the enrollments. Um, again, the four boxes just above that last uh, ta ta uh, title course. Um, you don't. You don't have to click on it. We're not going to. We're not going to click on it. But what this does, it will. It could change the view. Those two last two is either um the, a list view or a tile view right now we're looking at tile view if we were to click list view it will reconfigure these enrollments just in a list but it takes it takes a hot minute so we're just not going to do it to make you sit there and watch that happen but you can play around with that with your enrollments just click on those and try the filters try the sorting um, and try try the view and pick whichever one you know you'd like the best Open a course. Open a course. Oh, open a course. Okay. Um, so, so you'll see on on these courses, um, they'll have the title, the course code, the title, and then in a box you see the a blue eye, um, and then a green box with a white arrow in it. So, the Green arrow um, with the white box, the green box with the white arrow um, <laughs> will directly launch any learning module, the first next next available learning module in that course. Um, and then the I will could take you to the course description page. So we'll look at that um, because you can still accomplish the same thing by launching your course from the course description page. So you click on the blue eye. Yeah, and just a reminder, if you're taking classes here in Hanover, we prefer that you click on I because the module, the first module for every um, FTI class is the registration and that's already completed for you. Right. So um, it's not actually a learning module, it's just the registration. Yep. So the best way to go to your survey is to click the I. Okay, so once you click the I, you're on the course description page. And it will give you kind of a, a running count of how much progress you've made in that course. If some courses might have one module, one learning module, some might have three. Um, and it'll kind of keep track of, you know, how often you've been in it and, and what your progress is in the course. Um, it'll tell you how many credits, the fact that there's no due date, the estimated length and total hours. And then there's always a way to kind of rank um, how you, much you like the course. So we look at that sometimes. So the first thing you'll see is, um, is, well, that's the registration that Donna was talking about. This is an FTI class. So you wouldn't click the green arrow because it's not gonna do anything for you. It's not a course, it's just the registration. But if there were courses, that's where you would um, click on it. Then there's a description of the course. Um, so this is the teaching techniques for adults. So the second level class um, and there's three recordings there of classes. Are those? This during the pandemic. Oh, okay. So these were teaching tech classes that were offered online during the pandemic. So um, if you desire, you can click on those and, and watch those. <laughs> I don't know how exciting it'll be, but. Um, and then at the bottom, you'll see the modules that are linked to this course. So again, the first one is the registration. We'll ignore that. Um, but there are, um, there's one additional learning opportunity, um, a, an e-learning module called How Adults Learn. And you can see right now that this user has not attempted it, but if you click the green arrow, click the yellow arrow, white arrow. <laughs> white arrow with a green circle. <laughs> I say click play. Click, click play, yeah. that's the play, the play button. Um, it will launch. Now you'll see this is a VUBIS course, which is a lot what a lot of our third party courses are. They're, they are from our provider um, at VUBIS. So if you haven't taken a VUBIS course, um, they're 
They're really good courses. They have, you know, they always start with your navigation page. They walk you through their learning, um, learning quizzes, assessments throughout the courses. Um, and then it, it tracks. So, you know, you can, you can go in if you've got 10 minutes of time and start your course. Um, and but when you close out, it'll track and it'll keep you where you are for the next time that you log in. It'll just launch from where you, where you left off. And then finally, I think all of you have, who have been to a course here at the FTI, um, we have a, an end of course training survey and that survey is an online survey. And with our FTI courses, there won't be a completion um, of that course until that survey is completed. Um, and when you're creating a course, when we'll learn a lot more of this when, we're, when we go through the admin training, but um, like the How Adults Learn e-learning module is not a required module, so it wouldn't impact the completion of the course. As long as you've, you've taken the course, it's logged in. Um, Kelly usually kind of completes the course, confirming who attended the class, who was there for all three, five days. Um, and then once that is done and the survey is done, then you get a course completion. Alice, two and, things. Yep. Uh, one thing um, that sometimes, be, well, I've had several questions. Um, my course, such and such course won't play. And sometimes that is because there are no e-learning modules available. And a way to know that is if you click on the blue circle with the, the white eye, then that brings up all of the information that's available for the course. And you'll see that there's no um, e-learning modules, but there will be oftentimes uh, resources available. And Donna, if you scroll back up a little bit, it shows there the other tab that has the resources. Um, and then we have a question. I'm sorry, did you have something more, Donna? No, it was just me. I was going to say also don't forget, if you have a pop-up blocker on, it's not going to allow you to launch your course. So you need to make sure that your internet pop-up blocker is turned off. And, and that's part of the help. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the frequently asked questions. So okay. we have a link to explain that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we, ha we have a question and a comment. Um, okay. The comment is a very good one, thank you. So the question is, are any of the instructor courses that are taken at the FTI available to take online? And the answer to that is currently no. Yes, and mostly, how do we say? So if every FTI course code, we try to make a core or uh, a trade specific uh, course so you can upload completions for your apprentices when you go back to your district councils. If it's not proprietary uh, training like OSHA and we have the resources, it would be available. So um, an example would be uh, pandemic resiliency, right? We have an mm -hmm. online module for that. Yes. So we own that uh, training module, so it's available. But again, if it's third party and they don't wanna share their resources, mm -hmm. there would be a course code to upload the completion for your district council but the resources may not be there. It would just be available to the person who took the training here in Hanover. Right, so it would be up to the, the instructor that took the class here to share the resources if they have them. Great. Um, the comment that Mark had said, I think it's worth noting that your progress does not save if you close the browser instead of closing out the lesson. That's mm -hmm. a good comment. Very mm -hmm. good comment, yes. Yep. That's true. So, so when we logged into that VUBIS course, there was a X in the top right corner, and that would close the course. That's what will help. That's what will track in the LMS instead and of going the, all the way back to your browser. And at the beginning of the course, it does mention that. Yeah. Uh, Veronica, you're having some issues with PNT uh, 7900. Will you? send an email to support at IUPAT and I'll take a look at that for yeah, you. Yeah, and if I, if I can just kind of piggyback on that, um, just so you have an idea of how things work here at the, at the headquarters, um, like this year, we're gonna do a deep dive into the paint decorator cur curriculum. So we're in the process of forming a curriculum committee 
um, to review each of those courses in the paint program because we know that that those courses are some of the older courses and we need to not only update, you know, the look and feel of the course, but we need to take a look at uh, the content and make sure everything is up to date. So some of you DOTs, um, I think uh, I want to say it might be Dan Hink that might be reaching out. If anybody has a burning desire to be on this committee, um, I, some of you who have done it before know, you know, a little bit about the time that it takes to do it. Oftentimes we might just have a meeting and bring you here. That way you can leave all your other things behind and actually get some work done. Um, and then we typically work for a number of months, um, kind of going back and forth, letting you review, um, working with our developer from Kelly Press, who then uh, recreates the course in a nicer look and feel and makes it a little bit more usable um, than, what, than what some of our old templates look like. So that's kind of what we do. We do that for each trade. Um, we do it on an ongoing basis. So like, for instance, if Veronica's having problems with a specific course, we do ask you to send um, your, your problem or your question to the support at IEPAT.org, and we can look, look specifically at that course to make sure that it's functioning properly for you. Yeah. If you can specify okay. the, the slide or if it's an incorrect answer to a question, like we just received that a week ago and those are easy to fix. So we send it to the SME to verify, for example, what's the answer to the question. Then if it's verified, we send it to the developer and we update it as soon as we receive the new copy. Okay, we have um, a question from Phil. Donna, this is probably best for you to field. Will we cover options for creating course code for specific councils? So there's an example for DC 91. So it's a difference in time. It's an eight hour course and uh, DC 91's uh, course is only four hours. Okay, so um, Alice and I um, create the courses. So if you can send that, if it's a single course, send us the new course request form, uh, the completed form, then we'll create the course code for you. But if you have a lot, um, usually the admins or the DOT send us a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet would have uh, the title, the course description, identify if it's a cert or not. Then we'll be creating uh, those um, course codes for you. Yeah, and along with that, I mean, the more information, the better. So if you have a change in objectives or if you're only using a portion of the objectives, identify which objectives those are. That way we can help keep the you know, course syllabus straight. Yep, if you want to re review your uh, syllabus or all the lessons or, or all the courses that you offer, I mean, there was a district council that we created maybe 80, 80 plus courses. Mm -hmm. So send us that spreadsheet and we'll review, then we'll call you if we have any questions. Okay, great. Thanks, everyone. Um, Juan sent a recommendation that instructors and apprentices start the LMS with the core 0001 learner orientation. Great suggestion. Yes. Uh, we, we have three more sections to cover, so we'll send it right over to Lisa. Okay, so um, the next thing that we're going to go over is the main toolbar that's going to be on the private page. So what the learner is going to see when they go to their own dashboard. So the first thing that they would want to do would be click on my dashboard and well, there you go. <laughs> it opens. So right here, we're with the enrollments once again, and I'm going to um, go through, I'm not going to go through up at the top, the toolbar, the news, the help, the ifti.edu and the admin tools, because Alice covered that. And it is the same on the private page, though they will link to the same things that she spoke about earlier. So feel free to, you know, explore them from your private page as well as the main um, public page that you first log into. So I'm going to talk specifically about um, the catalog. So if you click on the catalog, it's going to bring up your catalog specific to your DC. So um, our example here, um, I believe we used um, DC 46. So we just have an example of what a DC 46 user would see when they log in and click on catalog. So a catalog is going to have basically all of your um, courses, your programs listed under their each category. So if you click on um, 
click on coronavirus. Um, okay, so that is going to bring up a description of what it is, and it is obviously courses about coronavirus, and they have some in Spanish, and they have um, some in English as well. So here, it's, here is where you would access um, the courses if you're interested in taking them. If they are open for you to enroll, um, I want to just click on coronavirus preparedness right there. Okay, as you can see, it says enroll. If it says enroll, that means you can self-enroll in the course, okay? Usually we'll ask for certain courses, trade-specific that you have your DOT register you, and you know probably know that procedure. But if there are third party, third, third, party, <laughs> third party courses that are public, um, you will be able to self enroll. So I just wanted to mention that, and it would obviously have that little box that says enroll, and you would be able to do that as well. Okay. Um, so go back to Catalog. All right. And um, down the bottom of the little I, uh, the little tile for the catalog, you'll notice it has um, looks like a stack of books, then one book, and a little pathway. So basically, it's going to give you your programs if they're listed there. This one says zero. Then um, if you click on blueprint courses, it's going to have eight courses listed. Okay, so you see that with a little icon, and then it also has a learning path. So the little pathway is a, a the learning path. And if you click on that, it'll recommend the courses that you should take for that learning path to be able to complete that learning path. Okay, so I also would like to review with you um, on the uh, far right of the um, toolbar are three icons. And the first one is a little bell. And that is the this is the announcement um, icon, and it will link to any announcements. Usually an admin uh, at your district council that has admin permissions will be able to uh, put announcements there specific either to you, like if a course is canceled or um, an alert that it's starting soon, um, if a course is closed, um, maybe system maintenance might be listed there as well. So uh, if, if you have an announcement, you'll have a little red um, square pop up so you know that there's an announcement that you need to read. I don't think there's any there. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and next to the little announcement tool is the translation um, icon. And basically, if you click on that, you will see several different types of languages that you can have that specific page interpreted in. So, um, for example, uh, click on, okay. Click Spanish. Right? Click Spanish, that's fine. <laughs> okay, okay, so she clicked on Spanish and you'll notice the catalog now is in Spanish, okay? And, but the courses are still in English. So we're not interpreting, we do have Spanish courses and French courses available, but this is specific to interpreting the page that you landed on. So navigating, being able to navigate in, in that uh, particular area of the LMS. Mm -hmm. And this, this was helpful when we had issues with um, Spanish speaking apprentices um, who were enrolled in OSHA 10 and 30. So at first the, the fix was change the instructions, the email instructions to Spanish, but they had difficulty navigating the website. So uh, one suggestion is if, if you sign if you sign on to the LMS, translate your um, your um, languages to uh, Spanish. So that was helpful for them. All right. So like I said, those um those are the uh, that's going to help you be able to to navigate the web page. Um, also, we do have just to let you know, we do have courses in. Uh, some translated in um, Spanish and French. We have 44 courses currently translated in French and 30 Spanish courses. So if you search those up, you'll be able to find them. And yeah. if, you, if you need more courses translated, just mm -hmm. send an email uh, to any to any curriculum me uh, staff member or send a request to the support mailbox. 
So that, and that's if, with regard to the trade curriculum courses. So we're starting to translate those. Yes. Okay. All right, so I'm going to um, go over to the final icon on the far right, which looks like a little person. And that is going to be the profile icon. So when you click on that, it's going to bring you to your profile page. And on the profile page, you'll notice that you have some options here. You have properties, files, external training, and security questions. So we'll start with properties. So if you have a picture um, that can be uh, uploaded there, um, you're allowed to do that if you, you want to, as you can see. Um, there are certain things that you can upload and certain things you'll notice that are grayed out that you cannot uh, change. So what you'll be able to modify is your email, um, no, not your email, I'm sorry, your, um, yeah, that's what, it's right there, password, <laughs> sorry, right in front of my face, password, yes, you can change your password on that page and then confirm it again, so you'll have to add it twice. You can also, um, I believe, change the time zone and your, can you do the date of birth? Date yeah. of birth. Everything is every, already populated. Okay, yeah. yeah everything grayed out is coming from IMSC or you. Okay, right. Okay, so that's already populated in um, when you uh, are first assigned an account, IMSC. And now, as Donna said, once you have a Unite account, it automatically goes into the LMS. Okay. All right, so um, then it has, of course, your other information that's probably going to be filled out for you. And then if you do change your password, or you change your time zone or whatever, you need to make sure you click save changes so that you don't have to do that again. Okay, if you go to uh, next to properties, you have files. And here you're able to um, upload a file, um, anything that you're uh, keeping, like if there's a certificate that you have that you want to upload. Now we do upload certificates, like for the instructor training program, um, you'll get one mailed to you, but you also will have it uploaded to the LMS as well, um, along with your transcript, the date of your transcript, because transcripts are always changing, but at least the, the one that um, enables you to get your instructor certificate. So um, that's, a nice, that's nice to have as well. And then um, external training is another area. Uh, now this, you, if you take an outside course, and you have a certification, you certainly can add it here. However, once you hit save changes, um, it is going to shoot an email to your DOT and the DOT has the final say as to whether it's accepted and approved or not. So uh, just keep that in mind if you do upload something there. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. to clarify, it won't be mm -hmm. an email. It would be um, an item on their um, administrative task widget. Oh, okay. If, if they're the DOT. Okay, so it'll go to their administrative task widget on their um, LMS dashboard. So these are new features of the mm -hmm. LMS, the files tab and the external, external training. So we haven't used it. If you find purpose like files, um, for now the IFTI is just uploading files to instructors mm -hmm. and coordinators, the official transcript and certificate. Uh, the user has the permission to upload any file. If you feel that there are ways that you can use this, mm -hmm. it's possible to exchange files using the profile page. Yeah, some people use that to upload a picture of their OSHA 30 or their OSHA 10, mm -hmm. their, high, their um, high school diploma, mm -hmm. things that they may need on a job site that they, they can just go to the LMS, click on their profile, and grab those images. So, so things along those lines, even third-party certificates, your, your CPR, cards, things along those lines that, that students or instructors might find helpful to have access to instead of trying to search them a different way. Right. And and those anything that is in the LMS course code that ends with a C will be found on the mobile app as well. Okay, so we said ex external training. And then you also have the option to um, have uh, security questions. So if you want um, extra security for your page, you can um, have uh, several, what's it, three questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then save the changes, of course, or else it's not going to save. <laughs> and when did these security questions pop up? Um, one of the most recent releases. So it's another option if you forgot your username as opposed to um, 
oh, your, your password. Okay. So it's a way to recover your username, not okay. your password. Not your password. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Did everybody hear that? The security questions are a way to um, change your username. Retrieve your, your, retrieve retrieve your, your username if you've forgotten mm -hmm. your member, member your member ID. I always say commit it to memory, but a lot of people don't. <laughs> Um, so if you click on that little my profile, so it'll say who you're signed in as, you can click actually, you can go right to your profile from there. And then of course you can sign out from the LMS as well. Yeah, one of the most important things on the profile page for the users is their email address, because if they do forget their password, that's the email address on file. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's gonna go. Okay, Al, is there a question, Al? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, there was a question. I'm sorry, I can't read the name from my. There, I'm t I'm oh. handling those in the in the chat. They're not um. They're not universal questions. Oh, okay. Yep. Any other questions that you might have about um, logging into your own dashboard or your profile? Any alerts? Anything with translations? Any questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, Phil. Phil Harper. Phil, uh, when a student fails a third part a third party course like Oshitin, is there a time frame to reassign said course? Phil, this is something that we've had uh, come up quite a bit lately. So the third party courses, I can speak specifically to uh, Oshitin and OSHA 30. Um, a member has three attempts to pass each topic exam and the final exam. If they do not pass with those three attempts, then they have to be re-enrolled in the course, which means a whole new enrollment. And that has to come from, that request has to come from the DOT to um, the FTI International to the waiting. curriculum team. Video and everything in there. They have a course in here. Oh, oh we've got somebody's mute all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so from there, our team has to request from Click Safety to reset the course. Um, keep in mind that the the um, member will have to start the course all over again, even if they're on the final exam. The same thing goes for if the course has expired. They have six months to complete it from start to finish. So if they don't finish it in the six months, even if they've spent 28 hours in OSHA 30, they have to start all over again. So uh, is there a certain time frame? No, there's not a certain time frame. It's based upon uh, the request we receive from the DOT to have the course reset. Then we send the request to Click Safety and then they will reset it and we get back to you. Um, this morning, that took five minutes. Other days, it can take several hours. Um, I have not experienced it being more than 24 hours, so it's pretty quick turnaround. I hope that no, answers you. Well. It, it does. Thank you very much. Um, You're welcome. So I, I just need to hit the, so I, as the DOT, I just need to email the support uh, email, basically stating the member's name, their ID number, what occurred to get it reset. Correct. And then okay, the next yeah, one. Occurred. Thanks, Phil. Uh, the next no, question you. from Adolf, uh, do we have OSHA 30 and OSHA 10 in Spanish? We have both in Spanish. Okay. Um, we're ready to continue. All right, thank you, sir. But they have delays over here in Vegas, bad communications. No problem. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, it, Donna and Alice, it looks like you all are muted. I think. Uh, oh, I think... oh no wonder. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> right. so, we were saying all kinds of things. You weren't looking. Yeah. Nobody was responding. Okay, all right. So, we, we have okay. just about 25 minutes left, and we have uh, just the widgets to go. Yeah. So Donna mm -hmm. and Ken will take over. Okay. The, the last part of the dashboard would be the widgets. So the widgets are found under the taskbar or the toolbar. And widgets are applications where it's easy to find a feature or function within the system. Because the complaint before is uh, they're embedded in multiple clicks. 
So now it's easier to find it, but I'm looking for my transcript certificate. I just click on a widget and it's readily available. And you can move widgets, uh, depends on how you wanna view them and move them around. But uh, by default, you would see enrollments. You would always see enrollments up top. Then learning path, that's the second widget that we um, advise everybody to have since most of us are in, enrolled in learning path. So that's an easy, easier way to view your enrollments. Then depending on how you use the LMS, you can have the transcript there. But for my account, I always use reports. So I subscribe to the reports widgets for, for admins. So all the widgets, if they're not clicked, will be found here. So for users, we have about six uh, user widgets. And uh, the first widget will be the learning path. So the learning path, again, it's a series of um, courses uh, that are assigned to your apprentices or that are assigned to our accounts. And um, you would see here if they have um, time limits, if it's overdue, completed, so you would see everything here by clicking the tabs. And if you're already taking it, you would see the status of your learning path, if there was uh, a date assigned to, to that or an expiration or a time period assigned to it. But most of the time, you can just click on your learning path and view it. And it loads all those um, courses assigned to the learning path. So this is a very simple learning path. So it would have only two courses. If you have 20, 40, then it would have a listing of all the courses. And aside from that listing of courses under overview, you have the resources. So in our, some of the instructors would want um, documents assigned to a learning path. Either they, they are handouts or assignments that you wanna um, give to your students. So they're easily available th through the learning path. Then if they want to take the course, they just click on that play uh, and view the course. Again, on the next uh, webinar, we'll be teaching you how to create learning paths. So if you look at your accounts, you might have multiple um, accounts or learning paths assigned to you. Uh, if you're an instructor, usually we assign the trade specific learning path in whatever learning path that was assigned to your district council. So aside from the learning path, I also enabled my transcript. So the transcript are the completions uh, uploaded in the LMS by your admins or um, DOTs. And they are also uh, the online courses that you've taken in the LMS. So once you completed an online course, it gives you a, a completion found in your transcript and also gives you a certificate of completion. So from this um, widget, the transcript, you have the course code. If it's part of the learning path, you also have the learning path transcript. Let's say I completed my learning path. It would see the completion. I would see the completion here. And if I'm attending uh, an IFTI course, then some of my course would um, show here since they're um, um, classified as ILT. So my transcript would have um, the credits, date of completion, and if I want to print it, um, this would be the, the format. It would show the credits, the status, date of completion, and um, the LMS gives status by module. So every module would have a status. If there are multiple modules in the class, you will see the status. And if a course is available, then it would also be listed. Um, the official transcript, if um, you're using it for your COE, we have built it in Unite. So that's available. It would have the letterhead, the logo, and it would list uh, uh, by the specifications of uh, district councils. All the requests are there. And we're in the process of modifying the official transcript. So if you have any suggestions, you can reach out to us, then we'll be sending that to uh, the integrated systems department um, managed by Kirk. Aside from the transcript, um, I also have here, I also opened my documents widget. So the documents um, are all the files that are under your resource tab. So this um, student is assigned multiple courses through 
uh, his district council 46 account. So depending on the permissions that you've given the student, these are the documents that he'd be able to see um, logging onto his account. So this um, student has about 72 documents. So for DOTs or for um, instructors of all trades, you might have a lot. You might have um, more than 500 if you're assigned to all the courses. <laughs> so, and sometimes um, you forget where you saw it. I mean, you've been to multiple courses mm -hmm. and you just know that it starts with this uh, word. So again, with any search uh, field in the LMS, you can just type in, um, I know it has a hazard word. So, and you can just type in that um, keyword and it finds you the document so that maybe that's what you're looking for or it might not be it might not be the word so you can just type in another word again these are the resources found in the courses it, it's just another way to find them or view them aside from the documents widget i didn't open uh certificates so let me open certificates and can we'll talk about the other widgets so i open certificate and it goes to this tab i can move it around It went up top, so I completed one of the courses, um, managing stress, two stress. <laughs> so I, I have um, an overview of what the certificate is when I completed it, and if it has an expiration date, then I can always open it or save it as a PDF or print it. So most of the uh, certificates in Hanover have been converted to um, the online certificate. So if you if you just want to print your certificate, you can go to your certificate widget and uh, click on print or save it as a PDF. Okay. So those are uh, some of the, some of the widgets available. Ken will talk about the last two widgets. Donna, we have a question before we move forward. Um, Juan, okay. Juan asked, "What if I do not have any options in my learning path?" Does that, does that mean you don't have any enrollments in your learning path? What, can you clarify your question? Uh, correct. Uh, I do not have any options, or I can't even see anything. In it. So, so Ken, would that mean he's not, uh, that would mean he's not like enrolled, not enrolled in, a in a learning path? Correct, that's right. what it sounds like. Yeah, you may not have a learning path enrollment at this point. And I can look at your account and see what should be your enrollment. So, it, who is that again? It's uh, Juan. 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 Well, we'll take we'll take a look at it, Juan. Yep, Juan. I'll review your account because um, the learning paths and your permissions are requested by your DOT. Usually, they would send us an email, or when you're attending a teaching tech class, um, uh, you will be talking to your DOT to. Um, Give you that permission, but I can review your account and work with your DOT to 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 have the right uh, enrollments in learning paths assigned to you. Thank you, Donna. All right, I think we're ready for uh, widgets two with Ken. Okay, thank you. Um, they say the the best two for me. Um, they're probably the least used. <laughs> Um, the one is the My Communities widget, which is the group of people on the top left. So, Donna, if you click on that and open up the communities, basically what a community is, is what the, uh, what the student has access to. Any discussions, any documents that were shared uh, within each other in, those, uh, in that community. So, there's a community for DC 46. Um, there was a, a, I think there was a discussion or a document that was shared. So those are things that are just specifically to DC 46 that are user generated. Um, like I said, it's really not used that much, um, but that's what that, dot, that um, widget is. It can be closed, moved around just like all the other widgets. So it's really just a, a place for users in similar communities that they can share information. The other widget at the top is the leaderboards. 
So if you open up the leaderboards, and this is more informational, um, instructors, DOTs might like that information a little bit more. Um, but and when apprentices, they want to see where they are in the list. What it does is it brings up all the the users in the system. Should we scroll down at the bottom? So the last widget is the leaderboards, and you can see that these are sorted by course total, all time, and global throughout the LMS. So Joseph Daniel, I'm not going to try to pronounce the last name, um, is the top user. He has 294 courses. It goes down to Mark and David, and it goes down. Those are the top 10 global. So each one of those drop-down menus has a different option. So Donna, if you click on the course total, you can see it's by credits, um, by certificate, or by certificate credits. Course total makes the most sense. That's why that's the default one. Um, the next tab over on the right is all time, but you can actually look at this year, this month, or this week. So if you scroll down and change it to this month, it'll refresh and it'll show you the most active users globally sorted by course this month. It's and still again, <laughs> Joseph is, Joseph's busy. Um, but then Melissa kind of got number two and Melody is number three. And again, this is global, but if, you, if you're an um, instructor at DOT and you want to look in certain areas, you can do it by state or province, by country, by member class, by district council, or by region. Um, you can click on any of those and it'll break it accordingly. So if you want to look at everything in district council 46, then it'll sort it. So those are up to you to play with and see where um, people that you have access to are busy and, and what those numbers are. So that's what those. Um, so district council would reports. only be visible to the district, their own district council. Yes. Yes. That's all I'm covering. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Great. Thanks, Ken. And You're welcome. that completes each section. Um, we have some time for questions and answers at this time. Um, before, I'll ask the team if they have anything they want to add before we take questions again. Um, did you mention about where they could get the LMS manual? Did anybody mention that? Not yet. You, you oh, okay. Mention. Okay. Um, if you are interested in having an actual printout with some screenshots of what we went over today and we'll, we'll be going over the next time, there is the IFTI LMS manual, and you can find that right on the home page of your dashboard. Um, I mean, sorry, the home page, home page. public home page, yes. Um, so if you just want to click on that link, you'll be able to get access to a PDF copy if, if you want one, and you can either download it and print it out, or you could save it to your desktop. Yeah, and that's also good for your uh, students, yeah, if you mm -hmm. have new apprentices. Yeah. They can just go to the link. It's part of the home section where um, Kelly played the animation. It's right mm -hmm. below that uh, area. Or it's within other parts of the LMS. Once they're logged in, it's part of the LMS orientation course or your admin course. So you can find it in several areas. But I, would I want to uh, read Wendy's uh, question about OSHA. So she had a question about OSHA enrollments, and is there a way for the district council staff to be notified? Donna, that's been addressed twice already. Yes, and I want to point out that that would be our sample for the next webinar. So there's a way to do it. There's a report, and we'll do that uh, as a practice for the next webinar. Uh, running reports for OSHA 10 and 30. Okay, we'll go ahead and take any questions if you want to put it in the chat or if you want to unmute your mic. No questions? No questions too small. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did we go too fast? Go too slow? Alice, this is Tom with BC82. Is next week the continuation or is that for those that were not able to join us today? 
uh, next week will be the next level. So it will be more of the administrative features of the system. So we'll get more in depth on courses, learning paths, um, reports and things like that. So highly recommend. And, and just a correction, that's two weeks from today. That'll be the 19th. The yeah, the 19th, March 19th. Yep. And Kelly mentioned uh, it would be, uh, this was recorded and it would be sent to you. Uh, so if you have any instructors or admins who fail to attend, uh, we can send that and they can review the webinar. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And as always, if anybody has any questions, you can use the IUPAT support or the FTI contact form in, in the LMS to um, ask us questions. We're happy to help. Before we go, I would like uh, just to touch on some attendance issue, uh, excuse me, some t attendance um, housekeeping. There are people that are logged on that do not have a name, so I'm not sure whom that is. Uh, the second thing is we have some district councils that look like they have more than one person in attendance at their particular location. So if you have not sent an email to the IFTI that states, you know, you have five people and in, in their names, if you could send that so we can um, record who was in attendance, that would be great, greatly appreciated and helpful for us. Yep, it, that would help us for the in-person training. So. Again, the requirement for the in-person training is you've attended the two webinars because that would be the hands-on part of this, um, of, of the LMS training for coordinators and admins or whoever wants to take it. I have a question. This is uh, Tim Lindsay with Local 1959. Um, hey, Tim. Hi there, how are y'all? Um, good production. Um, is it gonna be the same uh, website or excuse me, Zoom number? and password for the next uh, webinar, or will there be a different one issued? It's a different invite, which means it's a different meeting code. So well, that has been those, sent. I'm sorry, go those, ahead. No, I'm sorry, you go ahead. Uh, those invites have been sent out to the participants that have been received from us. So the DOTs that have updated their, their list and sent that information to us, or that have updated their list, then, then we've sent that out already. Um, so if you're interested in attending and you haven't received the invite, please get with your DOT or, or coordinator so we can get that information to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Then uh, some of you are requesting the support email. So it's support at IUP, <laughs> I misspell it. It's support at IUPAT.org. And Jeremy, yeah. the, the Job Corps um, invites have gone out already for the second uh, training. What I have discovered is some of those email addresses that were given to us were personal emails and not the Job Corps emails. So if you did not receive it, please send an email and I'll be sure that gets over to you. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, if you don't have any questions, thank you for uh, attending the webinar. I know everybody's busy, but thank you for um, staying with us and having this refresher for, for your district council. Again, the next uh, webinar is on March 19. So we'll see you then. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a great thank day. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Good job. Ooh, that's a lot. You need to be more. Down on mute.